Good morning, church. It's so good to be in his presence this morning and to know the love of our beautiful Abba. How faithful is God? I just think it's an amazing, mind-blowing kind of concept that the creator of the universe wants to be with us. God is so good. Um, I just want to give him all the glory and honor this morning. Amen, church. Um, This morning, I wanted to continue to move forward with some of the themes and concepts that we've been sharing with you lately. Um, As some of the isolation restrictions have have been lifted, we find ourselves at a crossroads of letting go of the old and walking into the new that God has for us as Grace Church. And last week, you would have heard Wayne share his message and quite a number of those thoughts and themes were in that message um, based on the uh, the theme of missions this month. Um, So over these past few years, we have been repeatedly bringing to your attention um, how God has been preparing us individually and collectively for many years. He's been preparing us for such a time as this. His fruit in our lives can't be rushed. But what I love about that is that is that his fruit is always sweeter and always more abundant than our self efforts. And that's the exciting thing about a relationship with Jesus. Our testimonies of his goodness are delectable. And I use that word because I'm reminded of Psalm 34 verse 8, which says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. When you know God, you always want to know more about him and you want to have more experiences with him. And you want to know what God is doing. And I know for me, I'm going to continue to just to press in and to chase after him harder um, because my whole life is actually a testimony to his goodness. And I'm praying, church, that that would be the same for you. So right now, we are going into a time where as leaders of Grace Church, we need to make some decisions about our future. These are decisions that we've been praying about actually for a while, like where and when to meet what our gatherings would look like in the future and what being the church actually means in a physical way because we know that the church is not a building. So there is a lot to wait upon God for. And as we know, things around the world have changed. We have all been changed and those out in the world have been changed and things have been shaken up. And so this is actually a good opportunity for us to embrace change. For me, though, I have an underlying concern that as a church, we could quite easily head back to what um, the comfort of what is known. It's a bit like the Israelites and um, wanting to return to Egypt. Even though they were slaves there, Egypt was what was known to them. For generations, it had been known to them. And the unknown of the wilderness out there actually became a bit too intimidating So stepping into the unknown is challenging and at times scary. There are so many what ifs and so many insecurities tend to rise up within us and we can find ourselves scrambling a little bit, I guess, trying to hold on to something that is secure. Sometimes this leads us into making hasty decisions instead of waiting on the wisdom and leading of the Holy Spirit. But again, I want to encourage you in this church. And remind you that the only secure thing that we have to hold on to is Jesus. Isaiah 28, 16 says, Therefore the Lord God said, Look, I have laid a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. The one who believes will be unshakable. So this morning I want to um, share a message with you, church, that leads us into the unknown wilderness, but it also encourages us that we are positioned well in God's plans and that we are eagerly expecting to see his fruit come to pass in our community. My message is called Mary and Martha, bearing fruit, not forcing fruit. And so today I'm going to focus in on a well-known story from the Bible. We all know it. And it's a story that maybe you've heard many messages on and many different opinions on. But for me, I'm going to be looking at the Mary and Martha story from a new covenant perspective. Luke 10 verse 38 to 42. 
As they travelled along, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to his message. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations to be made. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord replied, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion and it will not be taken away from her. Now, quite often, church, you would have heard this story of Mary and Martha used to illustrate the point of how we as believers should not be like Martha. Martha is preoccupied with the business of life and she misses the opportunity to sit in Jesus' presence and to listen to him and to listen to his teaching. Instead, we are quite often told to be like Mary. Mary stopped and she sat at Jesus' feet and she sat in his presence and she did listen to his teaching. And while this may be a simple truth found in the literal story, There is so much more to understanding Mary and Martha than what I can share with you today. Before I get into it, though, I want to share an interesting thing that I that I noted that the position of the story, Mary and Martha's story um, and how it's found in the book of Luke. So Luke in Luke chapter 10, the story is sandwiched between the parable of the Good Samaritan and the Lord's Prayer at the start of chapter 11. The Good Samaritan parable, as we know, is about caring for your neighbour, caring for your community, having a heart for your community. And the Lord's Prayer is about asking God for his kingdom to come. And I believe these are two really important concepts that the church should take hold of, caring for your community and praying and asking for God's kingdom to come. Also, the Mary and Martha story itself is comprised of five verses in total, um, which indicates that it's a message of grace because the the fifth letter in the Hebrew alphabet is He, which is the representation of grace. So we know that there is some treasure to be found in this story. A couple of years ago, I shared a message on not mixing law and grace. And in it, I shared a few points about Mary and Martha. I talked about Mary representing a biblical type for grace and Martha representing a biblical type for the law, for self-works or self-effort. So in that message, I shared about self-righteousness versus Jesus' righteousness. And the name Martha in Greek means lady or mistress. And in Hebrew, it actually means bitterness. So mistress is is the uh, female version of master. So Martha was her own master. Her own self-effort was her success. So she is a type, a biblical type of law. Martha received Jesus as a guest and she wanted to see that he was properly taken care of in terms of making him feel welcome and being hospitable. And that was a good thing. So all of these good things were good, But in fulfilling the cultural expectations, she was actually led to be distracted and and have an anxious nature. It says that she was worried. So these words distracted and anxious show us that Martha was drawn away or she became divided in her attention by this perceived service that she was um, or ministry that she was bestowing upon Jesus. You see, Mary and Martha both knew Jesus personally. He was their friend and he was a guest in their home. But their responses to Jesus were very different. Martha chose busyness and distractedness, while Mary chose rest. Mary is a biblical type of grace. Under the new covenant of grace, we are to rest. We are to rest in his finished work. Jesus says in Matthew 20, verse 28, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus wants us to allow him to minister to us. His death was to bring life to us. 
His liberty price was to free us as slaves to striving. And he purchased at the cross, he purchased rest. Rest in the security of him. We read in verse 40 that Martha got frustrated that her sister was not also working. But Jesus reminded her in verse 42 that the kingdom of God requires a heart response. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her, Jesus says. Here Jesus is also reminding us that striving and working out of self-effort is not what he requires. Our work cannot add anything to his perfect sacrifice. All Jesus requires of us is that we rest in his finished work and we trust that he is enough. We trust that he is in control of all things and that he is our secure foundation, no matter how uncertain the things that we face are. So law is works, doing, and grace is responding in relationship. It is a being, not a doing. Martha loved Jesus and was doing all the right things to satisfy those cultural expectations, but she missed the point. And the point is that the kingdom of God is important. Jesus, her beautiful saviour, came near, yet her self-effort got in the way. Church, let us be believers who don't miss it when God comes near. Let us be believers who passionately seek his presence and his glory and that our hearts would yearn for more of him. Let us not pick up on the idea that unless we are actively busy with self-effort, that we are doing nothing. That is the foundation of law, not grace. God calls us to, in Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. This is what he was pointing out to Martha, that Mary had chosen to seek first the kingdom of God, She responded in relationship. And that is the heart of the Father for us, Grace Church. We will respond out of his heart, not out of an obligation to what is expected or historically done in the past. When Wayne and I first started as pastors at Grace Church, um, God spoke to us about not being distracted by what others were doing in ministry, but to listen only to him and what he was doing. And this is a new covenant of grace perspective to let him build his church, not for us to build our own kingdom. Our hearts as leaders are to follow his leading in every decision we make. Now, sometimes from the outside looking in, those decisions or those things appear to be natural or foreign or strange to the way that things have always been done. And maybe they even appear to be um, in opposition to the cultural expectations of those around us. And that's like Martha, who was busy trying to fulfill those cultural expectations. She was trying to make things happen. And we can get caught up in that as well. We can try to make things happen. We can try to fit everything into some measurable box. But that's the way the world works. That's not the way the church works. We walk by the Spirit. And when we walk by the Spirit, we are not walking um, with our eyes on the natural. We are walking with a security of the eternal. For I personally know the one who is faithful. He was faithful to the point of death. And we need to continue to maintain trust in his finished work. We need to understand that his victory is our victory. And that no matter what, he is our firm foundation. We are to bear fruit out of grace, not out of works. The grace road is eternal with everlasting fruit, while the works road is based on striving or going ahead of God's timing. Moving without the Spirit produces very different results. Yes, they may appear quick and successful, but ultimately the fruit produced is temporal. And I believe a sad part of that works road is that we lose the God testimony 
because it is done in our own strength, we lose that sweetness that I shared about earlier in following the Spirit. There is an excitement as he unravels his plans and an awe-inspiring celebration of his goodness as we look back on what he has done. We celebrate together. A while back, God told Wayne to grow his people and that God would build his church. And we are at that place right now, church. You have grown in grace and your identity in Christ. You have used your gifts and talents for kingdom purposes. And I believe we are now at the cusp of the breakthrough. For many years, we have been casting vision week to week, sharing God's plans for us at Grace Church. The Holy Spirit has been leading us towards being the transformation in our community. And as Wayne shared last week in his message on missions, we want to shift our focus to more about the local mission field. Church, I know that it is our collective heart that we would see God move mightily right where we live and that we would be used by him for kingdom purposes. Jesus spoke to Martha about Mary saying, Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Church, moving forward together as Grace Church, we are unsure of what our gatherings in the future will look like. But what I want you to know is that we will always continue to choose the one thing that is necessary, that Jesus is central. Know that we will not be rushed, we will not be anxious, we will not be caught up in busyness, but instead we will be led by the Spirit in God's perfect timing and we will allow grace to bear fruit. Church, be blessed abundantly and remember to keep praying for us um, as leaders and the leadership team about the decisions that we need to be making for our future.